think I recognize that voice, but I can't be sure. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that. Sorry for being a nosy Nancy. Hayden's an old friend of mine, and this sounded all too familiar. Has anything happened to him? Of course, I've not yet introduced myself. My name is Dr. Yannick Fairlight, and I'm the founder and former CEO of System One Software, now owned by Parallax. He is telling the truth, at least as far as I can intuit from information on the MeshNet. And I do recall Hayden mentioning a Dr. Fairlight at least once in passing at some point. See, I don't bite. I hate to be the one to tell you, but privacy screens are hardly soundproof. However, if this situation concerns us both, then perhaps we can help each other. I won't press you for details, but perhaps I could be of some assistance, hmm? I remember my association with Hayden fondly, and I'd be happy to help him any way I can. Ah, uh, yes. As I've mentioned, Parallax acquired my company, System One Software. I accepted a CTO position, and additionally served on Parallax's board for several years. The other directors and I had a difference of opinion about the direction the organization should take. The non-centralized data scheme for most ROMs used today seemed ludicrous at the time. We were playing with fire, dangerous, morally ambiguous fire, and well, we hadn't invented a bucket of water. So when Parallax's servers were destroyed by hobbyist hackers, well, needless to say, it was a PR nightmare. Everything halted until we could get the damage fixed. And since the security work that goes into maintaining the integrity of near impenetrable mesh net is astronomically expensive, uh, we had our share of disagreements. In the end, I was voted off the board and they went on without me. Do I have hard feelings? Of course, who wouldn't? In the end though, it really doesn't matter. I'm an old rich man with enough hobbies to last the next two decades. Hayden and I made our acquaintance when the two companies first underwent the merger. At the time, he was a young hotshot researcher working in the search data correlation sector. He was assigned to find the best ways to integrate Parallax's own collection and analysis tools into System One's LIPS operating system. 
He was a bit much to handle at times, honestly. But I admired his passion for the subject. His research? No, not so much. I remember at the time he had interest in advanced machine sapiens. But that is the realm of science fiction. He once showed me a prototype of his. She was quite clever, very convincing. But you could tell she did not contain the spark of life. I assume that you are another of his creations. Yes, I am. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Turing. Um, did you say she? Ah, yes. She was quite insistent on that fact over the course of my conversation with her. Hayden said that she had picked out the color for her casing herself, pastel pink. Still, I must assume you are far more advanced than she if you are spearheading the search for your creator. Perhaps I should have had more faith in Hayden's little hobby. Do you know what became of her, or where she might be now? Hayden has told me so little of his past research. I'm sorry, Turing. It was a long time ago, and I'm afraid my memory is not what it used to be. If any of my contacts in Parallax make mention of your uh, erstwhile sibling, I'll pass it on to you. Hmm. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. Of course, ask away. The chair you find me in is an advanced diagnostic and life support run. Its development is one of my hobbies, so to speak. It monitors my vitals and administers medications as necessary to keep my body stable. I likely would have perished long ago without it, or at least would have been severely bedridden. It requires frequent maintenance, and I'm here to have it examined. There's a particular fellow at this hospital who is the only one I trust to run the correct diagnostics and fine-tune things to my exact needs. It's the same way you might get your car serviced, making sure everything's in check. It's too integral to my health to count on just luck. Unfortunately, uh, many critically injured patients were rushed into surgery all at once. My appointment has been pushed back. The hospital administrators placed me here with a resting patient so as not to be disturbed by the chaos outside. I don't think they expected you to awaken quite as quickly as you did. Ah, I can think of a few ways. I still have some contacts in Parallax and can put out some quiet feelers. Maybe they'll know something. I will admit, I don't have much to offer until there's more information. Is there anything you can tell me? I'd like to help in any way I can. What did you find at Hayden's apartment? The first time we went, nothing. But when we went back to extract his computer's data cache, the place had been pillaged, and the human revolution had spray-painted slogans all over our walls. Hayden's computer was gone, and we were assaulted. And now we're here, injured and losing our trail with each passing second. We're still frustratingly in the dark and running out of time. I fear Hayden is slipping out of reach. I am failing him. I'm very sorry to hear that. I wish I could do more. Hayden's company was most enjoyable. Prince 
and pauper alike. But right now, someone I grew very fond of is in great danger. I simply wish to see Hayden home again, safe. It's been very interesting speaking to you, Dr. Fairlight. I don't think we have any choice. If I'm looking into this on my own, you might as well benefit from it. We both want the same thing, yes? It's up to us to seize opportunity when it appears. I think I have a lead for you two that will prove most useful. You said you found human revolution slogans spray painted on the walls. I am acquaintances with the man leading the current human revolution protests at the Genus Clinic. His name is Brian Mulberry. After an introduction from me, he may be willing to shine some light on that particular event. Ah, well, when I exited Parallax, I sought out like-minded individuals. We worked together to prevent a full deployment of the MeshNet system. Brian Mulberry was one such person. We did not succeed in our efforts, obviously. Come to think of it, that event might have been what prompted Brian to take a more radical stance against technology. Ha! But, yes, our motivations aligned for one brief time, and I gained his respect from it. Hopefully, that can be useful for you. No, no, not in this lifetime. Even if I so desired, I don't think they would approve much of my work. While Mr. Mulberry and I were associated with each other once, uh, it was before he joined the Human Revolution. I find their methodology too aggressive, and their stated goals dangerously backwards. While I pushed for careful deployment of technology after the Parallax System 1 merger, I am no caveman. After all, I'd likely be dead without the advanced technology that goes into this chair. I will send a message downstairs to my assistant, Leon Decker. He will hand you one of my cards to prove your association with me to Mr. Mulberry. Make sure you speak to him before you leave. In the meantime, I'll get in touch with some other individuals I know and try to find out any other information about Hayden that I might be able to pass on to you. I'll be in contact. It was a pleasure meeting you both. Not let me delay you any further. Good luck, Turing. I don't think Hayden's faith in you is misplaced. You are an impressive piece of technology. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. We'll be in touch. Should I call downstairs to have you discharged? What the hell is wrong with you? I can't believe that you're still pulling the exact same shit you were years ago, but this time it's truly unreal. Do you even realize how bad impersonating a police officer is? It's a felony, jackass. I should be slapping cuffs on you and dragging your sorry ass off right now. Detective Rivers, wait! I'm sorry. The plan to lift your credentials and use them to access Hayden's apartment was entirely mine. Also, I feel it necessary to mention that though you are understandably upset, such language and imagery is beneath you as a respected officer of the law. Oh great, the robot did it, huh?
I guess I'll just take you to jail then instead. That what you want? Don't even try to take all the blame. I know that a certain someone lent you a helping hand. It isn't like you had the hardware to pull that off alone, little bot. Well, to be honest... Detective Rivers, I think I'll tell you the whole truth, since my friend here trusts you. Keep it under your hat, though, metaphorically. I am no ordinary ROM, but actually a prototype designed to be the first fully sapient machine. I suspect creating me is the main factor behind Hayden's disappearance, beyond his day-to-day -day research for Parallax. My name is Turing. Whew. Okay. Hi, Turing. Well, that is a damn bigger problem than you first let on, huh, old pal? The first machine sapient. People are gonna have things to say about that. Especially the human revolution. Ugh. This is exactly what I wanted to avoid. You sure know how to get yourself dropped in the drink. What the hell am I supposed to do with the two of you? <sighs> I guess I'm letting you off the hook. This time, and only because this time I can let you get away with it safely. I doubt anyone will notice your manipulation of that NSFPD ROM, nor that I was apparently in two places at once. But, mostly because I think you're right. Someone higher up in the department is trying to delay any search into Hayden's disappearance. Here's the story. Apparently, the investigations you ran into this morning were about the lock on the apartment door being reported broken by a neighbor. The building couldn't reach Hayden, so they went ahead and got it fixed on their own, but the NSFPD sent a bot to check things out and guard the place for a while afterward, right? Standard procedure, treating it as a break-in. Have someone there for when Hayden shows up. Obviously, you and I know there's a bigger story, but when I filled out the missing person report, I was informed in no uncertain terms that I am to wait an entire 48 hours before I can upgrade the existing case. Why? Just on the off chance the door being busted and Hayden being missing are unrelated and my search screws something up for the completion of the break-in report. As if. There's a problem if you're so by the book you're getting paper cuts. And that was before all of this happened. The Chief's not happy about whoever took the bot out. That's who they're after now. They won't even care if Hayden never shows. Today's assault and the vandalization of our apartment will only make the entire situation more confusing and sensitive for the police. There's too many moving parts to piece anything together, and it's not fun trying to argue with the bureaucrats that one thing happened over another. These little incidents of smashing shit and spray paint sound more like Froyo Stand 2.0 to them than a serious abduction. And I suppose I won't be very useful as a witness to the kidnapping without explaining the makeup of my being to the entire department, which will only scandalize things further. Darn it all! Look, it's not being squashed completely, so I don't think anyone's been bought. But until there's undeniable proof Hayden was taken by force, they're gonna care more about the poor doorknob and some paint on the walls than him being missing. Which means somebody definitely has some influence, enough to buy themselves time by forcing me to follow protocol to a T. Not that I will, but I'm gonna have to keep things quiet. It sounds like it's going to be up to us. Yeah, so stop messing around. There's certainly a story here, but if you keep botching your moves, you'll blow it. I'd really rather you not be involved at all, but I know that isn't going to happen at this point. I've got a bad feeling people are going to end up dead over this. I don't want you to be one of them, buddy. And I really don't want to be the one making that call to your sister. Please. Yeah, yeah. I know. Just here. Take this. Use it if you have to. It's not. This 
uses a medium range electrolaser pistol. It uses a low power laser to create a channel of ionized gas to complete a circuit between the gun and the target, then discharges a considerable amount of current into the air. Think of it as a wireless taser of the older variety. This is a more suitable personal defense weapon, and it is legal to carry in the OSF without a license. The neural scrambler we were attacked with uses a powerful electromagnetic field to disrupt electrical signals in the target's nervous system. That's far more dangerous and prone to be permanently damaging to the target. You got lucky. I told you to get a weapon, but you didn't, so I picked it up on the way here. Be smart with it. Me either. I'll be in touch if I find anything out, but don't hold your breath. My superiors are gonna keep leaning on me to do nothing. Back to the grind, I guess. See ya. Stay safe. Thank you for your time, Detective Rivers. receptionist and formally check out before we go anywhere. We should also look for Dr. Fairlight's assistant, Mr. Decker. He should be somewhere around. Look, they have a Hassie machine. Right? Very good. Isn't Hassie the best? That taste is so refreshing, right? I've read that a lot of people have switched over from their favorite colas and energy drinks to just Hassie. Good. Isn't Hassie the best? Hassie. That taste is so re. Hassie. Very good. Is it? That taste is so. Hassie. Very good. Isn't. is so very good isn't passy the best that taste is so My name's Leon Decker. It's a pleasure to meet you. Fairlight messaged ahead that I needed to pass one of his cards on to you. Here. Thanks for taking your time with him. He really gets in one of his moods when the chair's getting fixed. The last gala he organized was full of unsavory types. He's probably happy to help folks whose pockets aren't deeper than their thoughts. Yeah, boss said you'd have a few for me. I'm not really supposed to answer anything too private, but <laughs> take your best shot. Oh, uh, mostly gopher work, to be honest. Started when I was just out of the military. I was looking for a gig from someone who wouldn't care that I was an army rat. 
when North Korea made that hard. The old man pays me to guard his life, run a few errands for him, and play substitute arm candy at most of the charity galas. Not terribly exciting, but I've already had enough excitement to last me another 30 years. You think sitting in that chair all day is very entertaining? You know, the old man's talked to me about the things he used to do in his glory days. I'm sure he told you about when he was the head of some big companies. He was cold, ambitious, and took down anyone with half a mind to get in his way. I think once he aged, he realized how lonely that kind of life can be. Helping people is the only way he can feel like he's still doing something. But hey, what do I know? I just spend all my time with him. Probably not as exciting as you hope. I grew up in Montana on a family farm. I didn't have my pa's farm hands, so I joined the military as soon as I could, like my grandpaps. Came home looking to do something a whole lot quieter for the rest of my life. I didn't know at the time how boring quiet could be. <laughs> but hey, I'll take it over getting shot at. <laughs> no problem. I'll be around if you know where to look. You have a good day now. billing makes me glad I'm synthetic. You should look for more paying journalism work before you get shot again. Well, we're free to leave. Why not head back home first, yes? I'm sure you'd like the chance to shower at least. For such a clean place, it sure seems to have left you feeling foul. about what happened. They should still be waiting for us at Stardust. Let's not keep them waiting. Oh, by the way, while you were showering, I was able to replant your Crassula ovata. Don't forget to talk to it and give it some love. When I try talking to it, it doesn't even notice I'm there. Either way, our next move is Stardust. 